thousand dollars was Whispers from a Coffin. A story by Leonardo Chirinos. The residents of the town murmured on any corner. Did you hear what happened to the mayor? I was talking to Mrs. Norma this morning, and she told me that the coffin was sealed. It's a bad omen not to let see the dead in their funeral. It seemed like disrespect. Poor Mayor Ignacio. A plane crash. Hopefully, they'll find a leg and an arm. Those mountains are very wooded. An airplane couldn't... The government always lies. That old bastard is most likely spending the money for the construction of our hospital right now. If we go like this, we'll have no make offerings to the mountains when the next epidemic breaks out. All sorts of comments echoed in the telephone wires, bars, and hair salons. The best thing that could have ever happened to him was passing away. With all the witchcraft in his town, we have never been another victim for sure. The other day I found a picture of him in the bush, and the back said, The money for the hospital was also on the plane. Although many people defend the legacy and morality of the dead man, most of the town came to the same conclusion. There wasn't a body in the coffin. It was for that very rumor that Tony, captain of the baseball team, decided to plan the hazing for Bastian. <laughs> Breaking it down. Take the picture, and after leaving the building, you will be an official member of the team. He lied to the Navy Bastian, while Freddy and the twins could hardly keep from laughing behind him. So you will make your commitment to the team? I impossible, the boy replied, looking at the yellow ground of the baseball field. He felt intimidated when he started out of control in public. If they catch us, my mom won't let me watch a baseball game in my life, Tony. Not even on TV. I know a way in. Tony added. My grandma worked in that house for many years. There's a small window, but I am pretty sure you can fit through there. Bastien thought about it for a few seconds, but right before he could say no to the plan, screams came from across the street. At once, the group turns around to see what was happening. A big man in his mid-twenties was fighting with two officers who tried to take him into the van. The fat guy threw the spray paint can with anger hitting one of the officers on his face and bouncing then over the still wet graffiti on the wall of the school. It's Harry! A woman said quietly as she stood next to them, covering her mouth with her hand. I knew they'd catch him! Oh, God, what are they doing? One of the officers stumbled and, in a reflex action, held the belt of the big man tightly, pulling down his pants to the ankles, and both fell to the pavement. We want to see the body. Harry screamed out loud, while all the boys burst into laughter. People deserve the truth. Get off me. Get off me. I'll sue you. A third officer came on the scene and hit the man with a rifle stuck right on his head. The big man calmed down his frenzy and the other two officers took him to the van. His forehead was bleeding. The woman went on her way so frightened and Bastian took a look at the graffiti in which red letters desecrated the wall of the school. A thief can't buy heaven with people's money. Then it becomes obvious. That picture could bring an end to the discontent of the people in the town. He felt an unpleasant feeling of responsibility and he got scared. Isn't there another way to play? 
This time Bastien looked Tony in the eye and added, You know I am good. Tony took a moment. You're right, there's another way, he said, and Bastien's eyes lit up. Come tomorrow to play with the girls. All laughed out as a pack of hyenas. So daddy and mommy will be proud and everyone is happy. The boy reddened with anger and shame. I'll take the damn picture, he exclaimed angrily. Well, well, see about that. Don't forget that nobody dies for catching a ball, Mr. Magoo. Meet me here at midnight. I'll bring the camera. <laughs> without another word, Bastien turned away across the dusty field without taking his eyes off the ground. Then one of the twins went up to Tony. I think you shouldn't have mentioned his father, said almost in his ear. The team captain kept silent. In the distance, the bright red sunset cast Bastien's shadow on the field ground. For that one moment, the boy seemed not to be alone. <laughs> 